Hello readers and welcome to day eight, lesson eight of the one and only Ivan. We are already on chapters 73 through 86. So go ahead and find that page in your notebook. Let's start off like we do every time we're reading Ivan with our quick write. Today, our quick write asks or tells us to write about someone in your life that you love. How do you show love and care for this person? Hmm. Let's take two minutes to just quickly jot down some things that we do for someone we care about. I'm going to write part of the question in my answer. Someone in my life that I care about is okay now choose your person and write how you show that you love and care about them All right, scholars, I finished my quick write. If you need a little bit more time, go ahead, pause your device and take the time you need. All right. For my quick write, I said, someone in my life that I care about is my daughter. I show love and care for her by feeding her, keeping her safe, and snuggling her. So that's how I show love for my daughter. I bet you have ways of showing love to the person that you care about too. So I'm excited to read those answers. Okay, so today in our assignment, we're asked to write a quote from the story. When we're writing a quote and choosing a quote to write about, we are actually picking a sentence right out of the story to quote as an answer to that question. So, for this assignment, I want you to find at least one quote from the story to help support your answer. All right, so this is review from um, yesterday. Our first word was sullen, what's the word? Sullen. Sullen is an adjective meaning sulky and glum. What's the word? Sullen. Our second word is thrilled. What word? Thrilled is an adjective that means happy and excited. What's the word? Thrilled. Our next word is trudges. What word? Trudges means to walk slowly and heavily. What's the word? Trudges. Our last word from last week, or last week, yesterday was gleaming. What word? Gleaming is an adjective or verb that means shiny. What's the word? Gleaming. Okay, so here are our new words for today. Our first word is frantic. What word? Frantic means panicked. What's the word? Frantic. Our next word is scornful. What word? Scornful is an adjective meaning mocking and contemptuous, which means um, just kind of mean. What's the word? Scornful. Our next word is musty. What's the word? Musty means a moldy, stale, smelly. What's the word? Musty. So sometimes people will describe their basements as musty. And then our last word is incompetent. What's the word? Incompetent means unskillful. So you don't have the skill set to do what you're doing. So Mrs. Halverson is incompetent at skateboarding because I do not know how to skateboard. 
All right, let's read these words again the fast way. Word one is frantic. What word? Word two is scornful. What word? Word three is musty. What word? Word four is incompetent. What word? Awesome. Okay, so today, join me, please, on page 161. I'm going to read through 177, and then you're going to finish up reading pages 178 through 187. So please join me on page 161. All right, page 161, A Bad Dream. I lie awake, peeling dried red paint off my fingertips. Bob, who accidentally walked on one of my paintings, is licking his red paws. Every so often, I glance over at the empty ring. The classic glints in the moonlight. Stop! No! Ruby's frantic cries startle me. Ruby, I call. You're having a bad dream. You're okay. You're safe. Where's Stella? She asks, gulping air. Before I can answer, she says, Never mind. I remember now. Go back to sleep, Ruby, I say. You've had a hard day. I can't go back to sleep, she says. I'm afraid I'll have the same dream. There is a sharp stick and it hurt. I look at Bob and he looks back at me. Oh, Ruby says. Oh, Mac. She puts her trunk between the bars. Do you think, she hesitates, do you think Mac is mad at me because I heard him today? I consider lying, but gorillas are terrible liars. Probably, I finally say. He ran away after that, Ruby says. Bob gives a scornful laugh. Crawled away is more like it. We are quiet for a while. Branches claw at the roof. A light rain drums. One of the parrots murmurs something in her sleep. Ruby breaks the silence. Ivan, I smell something funny. He can't help it, Bob says. I believe she's referring to the finger paints Julia gave me, I say. What are finger paints, Ruby asks. You make pictures with them, I explain. Can you make a picture of me? Maybe someday. I remember Julia's picture, the one that will be worth a million dollars. I hold it up to the glass. Look, it's you. Julia made it. It's hard to see, Ruby says. There's not much moonlight. Why do I have two trunks? I examine the picture. Those are feet. Why do I have two feet? That's called artistic license, Bob says. Ruby sighs. Could you tell me another story, she asks. I don't think I can ever go back to sleep. I told you all I remember, I say with a helpless shrug. Then tell me a new story, she says. Make something up. I try to think, but my thoughts keep returning to Mac and his claw stick. Anything yet? Ruby asks. I'm working on it. Ivan? Ruby presses. Bob said, you are going to save me. I... I search for true words. I'm working on that, too. Ivan, Ruby says in a voice so low I can barely hear her. I have another question. I can tell from the sound of her voice that this will be a question I do not want to answer. I don't want to answer, excuse me. Ruby taps her trunk against the rusty iron bars of her door. Do you think, she asks, that I'll die in this domain someday, like Aunt Stella? Once again, I consider lying, but when I look at Ruby, the half-formed words die in my throat. Not if I can help it, I say instead. Is that what he really believes? He is about to say probably, right? I feel something tighten in my chest, something dark and hot. And it's not a domain, I add. I pause, and then I say it. It's a cage. Page 166, the story. I look at the ring, layered with fresh sawdust. I look at the skylight, at the half-hidden moon. I just thought of a story, I say. Is it a made-up story or a true one, Ruby asks. True, I say, I hope. Ruby leans against the bars. Her eyes hold the pale moon in them. The way a still pond holds stars. Metaphor. Once upon a time, I say, there was a baby elephant. She was smart and brave, and she needed to go to a place called the zoo. What's a zoo? Ruby asks. 
a zoo is a place where humans make amends. A good zoo is a place where humans care for animals and keep them safe. Did the baby elephant get to the zoo? Ruby asks softly. I don't answer right away. Yes, I say at last. How did she get there? Ruby asks. She had a friend, I say, a friend who made a promise. Page 168. How? It takes a long time, but finally Ruby returns to sleep. Ivan, Bob whispers, yawning, what you said about the zoo. How are you going to do it? Suddenly, I feel as if I could sleep for a thousand days. I don't know, I admit. You'll think of something, Bob says confidently, his voice trailing off as his eyes close. What if I don't, I ask, but Bob is already asleep. His little red feet dance, and I know he's running in his dreams. Page 169, remembering. Bob and Ruby sleep on. I don't sleep. I think about the promise I made to Stella and the pictures I've made for Ruby. And I remember. I remember it all. What they did. Page 170. We were clinging to our mother, my sister and I, when the humans killed her. They shot my father next. And they chopped off their hands, their feet, their heads. Page 171, something else to buy. There is a cluttered, musty store near my cage. They sell an ashtray there. It is made from the hand of a gorilla. Page 172, another Ivan. When morning comes and the parking lot glimmers with dew, I see the billboard on the highway. There I am, the one and only Ivan, bathed in the pink light of dawn. I look so angry with my furrowed brow and clenched fists. I look the way my father did the day the men came. I am, I suppose, a peaceful sort. Mostly I watch the world go by and think about naps and bananas and yogurt raisins. But inside me, hidden, is another Ivan. He could tear a grown man's limbs off his body. The flicker of time it takes a snake's tongue to taste the air, he could taste revenge. He is the Ivan on the billboard. I stare at the one and only Ivan, at the faded picture of Stella, and I remember George and Mac on their ladders, adding the picture of Ruby to bring new visitors to the Exit 8, Big Top Mall, and Video Arcade. I remember the story Ruby told, the one where the villagers came to her rescue. I hear Stella's kind, wise voice. Humans can surprise you sometimes. I look at my fingers, coated in red paint, the color of blood, and I know how to keep my promise. Days, page 174. During the days I wait, during the nights I paint. I worry when Mac takes Ruby into the ring. He carries the claw stick with him all the time now. He doesn't use it, he doesn't have to. Ruby isn't fighting back anymore. She does whatever Mac asks. Page 175, nights. I close my eyes. I dip my fingers into the paint. When I am done with one piece of paper, I set it aside to dry. It's so small, just one sheet, and I'm going to need so many. I move on to the next and the next and the next. It's a giant puzzle, and I'm making the pieces one by one. By morning, my floor is covered with paintings. I hide the paintings under my pool of dirty water before Matt can see them. I don't want them to end up in the gift store selling for $20 a piece, 25 with frame. These paintings are for Ruby, every one of them. Project, page 176. Ivan, Ruby asks one morning when I am trying to nap, why are you always so sleepy during the day? I've been working on a project at night, I tell her. What's a project? It's a, a thing, a painting. It's a painting for you, actually, I answer. Ruby looked pleased. Can I see it? Not yet. Ruby pokes with annoyance at her roped foot. She takes a breath. Ivan, do I have to do the shows with Mac today? I'm afraid so. I'm so I'm sorry, Ruby. Ruby dips her trunk in the water bucket. That's okay, she says. I already knew the answer. All right. So that's where Mrs. Halverson's going to stop. You today are going to finish the reading, pages 178 
to 187. Okay, I wrote it right up there for you. Now let's practice finding a quote from the book. So finding an exact um, direct quote from the book. So it says, chapter 79 is titled, Another Ivan. Who is the other Ivan and what is he like? Okay, so when they're talking about another Ivan, that's on page 172. I'm going to write that right here. Who is the other Ivan? So the other Ivan is a hidden Ivan. So that's what I'm going to put. Who is the other Ivan? And then I found a really good quote right here that can help support my answer. So he's hidden and then it asks, what is he like? I found a direct quote that can tell us what he's like. It says, he could, and I'm writing this word for word, he could tear a grown man's limbs off his body. And then I write the page number there. So do you see? How I have the other Ivan is a hidden Ivan. He could tear a grown man's arm limbs off his body. Page 172. So that tells your reader, right, that he's not really a nice Ivan, right? The normal Ivan considers himself to be calm and peaceful, but now he's getting kind of angry at the situation that he's in, that his friend Ruby is stuck in here. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I hope you guys are still enjoying the one and only Ivan, and I'll see you next week with Lesson 9. See you later.